Moses who killed a man and who married another woman, but God made him a warrior. God made him a, 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 a deliverer. God made him a father of a nation. Caleb of Sata, he was the lawgiver of a nation. Moses said not to divorce, but he left his wife and married another woman. I know you don't want to believe Moses married another woman, but he married an Ethiopian. Hello, somebody. Not a Midianite. His first wife was a Midianite, but the second wife was an Ethiopian. He married her. Somebody help me here. But let me tell you something. When, when Moses' sister and brother decided to come up against him for his marriage, God said, let me step into this and let me tell you what I think about what my servant Moses has done. You, the prophetess, I will speak to you with signs and wonders secondhand. But with him, I speak mouth to mouth, let it long. And when God turned his back, Miriam was turned into leprosy. You see, you don't understand. Moses was a great leader that God preordained before the foundation of the world. Let's look at Paul because I like Paul because he's my chief apostle. Saul, the great leader, the young man, holding the coats of those who stoned in Stephen. And there he's holding him, and the Bible says his body begins to transform. My God, and he begins to transform out of the natural into the supernatural, and there was Saul watching all of it take place. He saw this man's body transform from a natural body to a supernatural body, and as he was descending into the presence of God, he heard Stephen says, I see Jesus standing. My God, you say, why do you say that? Because one day, Saul was on his way to go kill. He was on his way to go and pull people out of the, of the synagogue. And the Bible says, uh, a light shine as the noonday sun. He was familiar with that light because he seen that light when Stephen was stoned. And he hollered, what, Lord, what will you have me to do? He heard what Stephen said. He had an experience with Stephen, and now he's about to go through the same experience. He said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And God shared with him and told him what he had to do. You have to understand he didn't know God at that time. He was a, 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 a Pharisee. He served the law in the natural sense, and they perverted the law, and they followed the law after tradition. But God was about to raise him up to become a great leader. And God's about to do something great. So much so, he was one of those rejected stones. When God told Ananias Saul was to come to his house, he said, is this the same man that's going around killing and putting us in prison? How dare you, God, ask me to bring him in? God said, I'm doing something, and I'm going to show him the things he must suffer. And you need to recognize and realize that God's got an unusual plan. Mm, 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 mm. Caleb Bosa, how about the whore who was a, was a whore who followed Jesus? The woman had demons. What about the woman that had demons who followed Jesus and supported his ministry? May I submit to you, God's looking for some great sinners. God's looking for some sinners that he can pour his life into. God is looking for some sinners that he wants to pour himself into. I am believing today that this is going to be the day that the Lord has made and that you're going to rejoice and be glad. Lift up your hands and tell God thank you. Lift up your hands and give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. I want you to know the stones that the builders rejected. Mm, mm, mm. Anybody knows about being confused and refused? Anybody knows what it's like for folks to pass you by? Anybody knows what it feels like when somebody don't want, when people indicate or show that one is not willing to do something? You are, uh, they don't understand. There are people who think that you don't know what God is going to do in your life. Because they are the builders and they are the ones that know what they're doing. My God, my God. But they refuse. They refuse to use you. They refuse to put you in the building because they didn't see no value. Lift your hands and tell God thank you. 
lift your hands and tell God thank you. But I want you to know, don't cry because it's God's doing. God allowed them to refuse you. God allowed them to reject you because God has something on his mind. There's a plan that God has for your life that nobody, your preacher don't know about it. You know, you sit in churches where people don't, the, the man of God don't even know God's hand is on you. Isn't that amazing? And they don't have nothing for you to do. They can't do nothing with you because they don't see where you fit or belong. But I want to say to you, just because they don't see where you fit or belong don't mean you don't fit and you don't belong. You may just be the chief cornerstone. And when God does what he's going to do in your life, they're going to be most amazed at what the Lord has done. Can you trust God today? Can you believe that God knows exactly what he's doing? This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. And then he says this in Psalms 118, verse 24. This is the day which the Lord have made. It's the day God's made. You don't have to cry. God's doing this. God is in control. Every power that be is ordained of God. You need to understand how God operates. But you know, we don't understand it because we don't have leaders to take us to the next level. They teach us A, B, and C. Oh, but there are many more letters than that. Some people know about the milk of the word. Some people know about the meat of the word. Some people even know about the mysteries of the word. But let me ask you this. Do you know about the mind of the word of God? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. God says, let it be in you. But we don't want to go into the mind of God, into the understanding and the wisdom, into the mind of God. The question you ask is the answer to the question. It's like God saying, while you're knocking, I'm opening up the door. You see, God is saying to you, you have been the rejected stone, but the rejected stone that's on the pile of rejection is the chief cornerstone. Lord, you don't hear what I'm saying. And God allowed them to throw you on the rejected pile so that you could be placed at the, the, at the chief cornerstone spot. Because God's got a particular place for you that he has prepared inside of what he's doing. And no other stone will fit that one spot but you. My God, somebody help me. It's God's doing. God's going to confound the mind of the builders to the point that they're going to have a certain spot and they're going to have to come to the stone of rejection to pull you out and place you in and there will be no other stone like you. And when people walk up to the building, they'll be able to say, this stone is different. This stone is the chief cornerstone. This is the reason why God is doing everything he's doing. My friends, I'm so excited about what God is saying. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hearts, lift your your minds and tell God thank you it's God's business it's the Lord's doing the prophet David says to us he says it is marvelous not in his sight but in my sight God is operating and is marvelous and we need to thank God for what he's doing Come on, now, I know you think you know. You're just like the builders. You have thrown on the side the person that God side decided to select. Oh, my friends, but you know what? God will prove every time that he's great. The prophet David goes on to say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Watch it now. Watch it now. What will we do? Come on, somebody. I know you know this. You're going to feel or show great joy or delight. You're going to come out of happiness. You're coming all the way into joy, which means it's got nothing to do with what's going on. It's got nothing. To, oh, you don't have to have your rent money, but you're rejoicing because the power of rejoicing is greater than the rent money. What will happen when you lift your hands and start thanking God, somebody will knock on the door and bring the rent. Oh, my God, let me get a drink on that. Somebody help me here. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. This is the day that the Lord, the prophet said, this is the day. The only person I know can make a day is God. And when he made the seven days, he said every last one of them were good days. Now, I know you think you have bad days and you think you have good days and you have all kinds of days, but I want you to know I have the day that the Lord has made. You know why my confidence is built? Because I know in whom I believe and I'm fully persuaded what he promised me is going to come to pass. Come on, somebody. My trust is in the Lord. I'm not leaning to my own understanding, but in all my ways I'm acknowledging him and he's the one that's going to uh, 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 direct my path. Come on now, let's put your trust where it belongs, in God. Oh, come on now. You're trying to figure God out, but you don't even know how God had it already prescribed. He wrote it down into his book, and everything that's being done has been preordained before the foundation of the world, and nothing is a surprise to my father. And the prophet David said, this is the day. Now, if anybody should have had some bad feelings about a day, should have been David. He has a company, excuse me, a country. One side is water, one side is mountain, and the other side is the enemy. And he's, in, he's surrounded by situations and circumstances, and he's able to tell you it's God's marvelous doing. I want you to know the circumstances you find yourself in is not the enemy, but it's God. It is God doing something in your life. I want you to get ready. Promotion is coming. But you know, promotion doesn't come from the north, the south, the east, or the west. Promotion comes from above. God is moving on you in a supernatural way, and those who will least expect it will see the handiwork. Bobo selebaka, selebo satelebaka, nedebo ka satelebaka. Those who least expect it will see the handiwork of God. Father, I am so grateful and I am so thankful for what you're doing. This is a magnificent day. It's the day you have made and you've allowed me to live inside of it. I'm grateful that I'm living in the day that the Lord has given me. David goes on to say, it's the day that the Lord has made and we will. Come on, now, I'm not going to say me. But I'm going to include you. We will do what? Rejoice and be glad. Say it with me. Rejoice and be glad. Say it one more time. Rejoice. What are we going to do? We're going to rejoice and be glad. Look to the hills from which cometh your strength. We're going to rejoice and be glad. My God, lift your hands up right now. I know, come on, lift your hands. You're watching me, you're hearing me all around the world. Lift up your hands and rejoice and be glad. I know you see the enemy all around, but I see God. It's God's doing. Oh, I don't want you to miss this day, this opportunity. Come on, I'm going to get me another drink on that. I want you to thank God for the great things that he has done. Oh, but thank God for what he's doing in your life. God is working your miracle out today. I want those of you that's watching and listening all around the world, I want you to know that God is doing something in your life. You are sitting around in misery talking about what people have done to you, but you don't know God has set you up for a blessing. My God. God have set you up for a miracle. God have set you up to do something great in your life, and you are crying. It's the Lord's doing. Come on, let's rejoice and be glad. I'll say it again. Let's rejoice and be glad. Somebody help me here. Rejoice, say it again. Rejoice one more time. Rejoice and do what? Be glad. I need you to rejoice. I need you to rejoice. And I need you to be glad. I need you to rejoice and be glad. I want you to turn your Bible into Joel. J-O-E-L. Joel chapter 2. I got a powerful word for you today. People are worried. People are fretting. People are fearful. About what? It's a marvelous thing that God has done. 
God has taken a rejected stone and made him the chief cornerstone for a season. Why don't you lift your hands and tell God, thank you, because my trust is in God. My trust is in God. I want those of you that's listening and watching by Periscope to understand and to know your trust should be in God. Come on, tell me that. Oh, my God. I want those of you that's watching, uh, go to my Facebook page, uh, Chief Apostle Leonard Lucas Jr., and feed me some words. Give me a word. Tell me what this message is doing for you today. Come on now, Chief Apostle Leonard Lucas Jr., go to my Facebook account and feed me some information and let me know what you're thinking about it. I want you to know that you are upset and worried about natural situations when God Almighty is doing something on a spiritual level, a level that you don't understand, a level that is superseding your understanding. Lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path that's what the word of the lord is saying to us today i want those of you that's listening and watching those of you that's all around to put your trust in god come on somebody put your trust in god put your trust in god Thank God for the people that he has placed in your life, but keep your focus on God. Here's what the Bible says in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 21. Fear not, O you people of God. Fear not, people in the United States. Fear not, the people in China and Africa and Europe and Australia. Fear not. Be glad and rejoice. What the Bible says, fear not, O lands. But be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Oh, Lord, if you were trusting God, you would watch it. If you were trusting God, you would see. If you were trusting God, you would watch and see what God is doing. For the Lord is going to do this great thing. God Almighty is going to do it. I want you to lift up your voice and lift up your hands and lift up your heart and recognize that God is going to do it. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. In other words, God is saying, you people of the field, you don't have to be afraid. Hello, you don't have to be afraid. Caleb, he used the word beast. But we know he's not talking about an animal because an animal don't have to fear. An animal don't, don't praise God. I want you to know that God's hand is upon you. Don't you be afraid. Do not be afraid. Put your total and complete trust in God. Lean not to your own understanding. God is working out your situation. Come on, let me see you lift up your hands. Let me see you rejoice in the Lord. God has given you the ability to lift your hands and your heart unto him and thank him. Come on, I need God to be the number one thought in your life. I don't need your situation, what's going on, your husband who's cheating on you, your wife who's about to leave you, your boss who's about to fire you, your children that's doing stuff you don't understand, your money that's funny and your change is strange. But I want you to know, put your trust in God. It's the Lord's doing. God is using situations and circumstances to turn your life completely around. My God, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Be not afraid because your pastors will spring forward. Matter of fact, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. I'm talking about in dry ground. Oh, Lord, I've had some wilderness experiences that I just didn't think God was on my side. I had some wilderness experiences. I wanted to just beat God down and up. Hello, somebody. God has allowed me to go through some wilderness experiences. I had a tunnel that was so long that I couldn't even see the light. Matter of fact, I stayed in the tunnel so long I didn't even think there was a light. But you know, God worked it out. And I'm saying to you that God is going to work out your situation. 
Put your trust in God. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. God is going to direct your path. I'm so glad. I'm so thankful. I'm so praising God this morning. I'm grateful to those of you that's watching by Periscope all around the country. I'm thankful to God that those of you that's online with us right, by television, by radio, by your computer, your telephone, I'm grateful to God. I'm encouraging you today to put your trust in God. Lean not to your own understanding. For those of you, oh, those of you that's listening and those of you that's watching, this is your day. God needs you to arise. God needs you to stand strong. God don't need you to wimp out. I'm telling you, put your hands in the master's hand. Oh, and God's going to see you through. Come on, somebody. Put your hands in the master's hand and let God work out your miracle. God is going to see. I'm telling you, today is your day. Right now is the time. God's going to do it. 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 God is working out situations. I thank God for the past, but I want you to know my future is brighter than my past. I thank God for where I've been, but where I'm going is better. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. I want you to know that the end of what God is doing is far greater. My friends, I need you to put your trust in God not in man. But I need you to pray for men. Pray for men who have power. Pray for men who have authority. Come on, somebody. It's Bible. Because as we pray, we'll have peace. As we pray, we'll have rejoicing. As we pray, we'll have the kingdom of God represented in the earth realm. I am a kingdom man, and I am preaching the kingdom of Almighty God. I stand on God's word. Jesus came up under a king by the name of Herod. He was Herod the Great, the worst king of the Herods. But I want you to know that Jesus was powerful and he did not allow Herod to interfere or stop. Matter of fact, one of the women in Herod's uh, administration was serving Jesus and paying for him to live. My God, paying sowing seed into his minute in Jesus' ministry, along with Mary Magdalene. My friends, you need to understand how great it is. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. For I'm telling you, the wilderness is about to spring forward. I'm telling you things about the change in your life. I am rejoicing today because God's going to get you up and about, get you ready for some action. Get you ready. Don't be afraid. Get up. Arise and shine. Go back and take your land. Arise and shine. Go back and do what God called you to do. Don't be afraid. Trust in the living God. Know what he promised you is going to come to pass. Oh, my God, my God. For the trees bear their fruit. I'm decreeing and declaring your season. You are the tree of righteousness. You are the planting of the Lord. You're going to bear fruit. You're going to bear fruit. Yes, you are. I don't care. Yes, you are. It's going to turn things around in your life. Oh, yes, you're going to bear fruit and you're going to rejoice and be glad. For you recognize what day it is. It's the day of the Lord. All oh, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against you shall stand. I am decreeing and declaring. I'm speaking a prophetic word to you today. Your future is bright. Write it down now. Those of you that's on the Facebook, I want you to respond. Chief Apostle Leonard Lucas Jr., go on my Facebook and respond. Your future is bright. I'm telling you, you're not going down, but God is going to raise you up. God is going to turn your situation completely around. Have faith in God. Put your trust and confidence in God. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God and God shall direct your path. I wish I could get some help up in here. I wish I could get somebody that understand what God is saying and what God is doing. God is good. 
God that we serve is good. You need to trust God. I'm not talking about Sunday school God. I'm not talking about a religious God. I'm talking about a God that you have a relationship with, a God who lives on the inside of you, a God that has filled you with the Holy Ghost, a, a God that saved you, a God that told you to give your life over to Christ and you received him as your Lord, your master and your savior. He decrees in his word, don't you be afraid. For your trees are going to bear fruit. Your fig trees and your vines will, will, will yield their strength. You're not going down. I'm decreeing today, but God is raising you up. I say I'm decreeing today that God is raising you up. You are not going down, but God is raising you up. This is live. I want you to know we're sending this signal to the entire globe. God is a good God. Come on, somebody. Lift your hands and tell God thank you. Lift your hands and tell God thank you because it's the day God's made. It's the season. It's the hour. And God is saying to you, you're going to flourish. You're going to bring forth fruit. You're going to yield from strength, not weakness. Oh, my God. Come on. Yield from strength and not weakness. You're going to yield from strength and not weakness. This is the day. Be glad. Be glad. Be glad then, ye children of the church, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain. I'm not just talking about <coughs> excuse me, physical rain. I'm talking about spiritual rain. I'm talking about what you need, what God's going to do. He's been blessing you. Moderately. Oh, I, I understand that. Every now and then you get a blessing. Oh, but the rain's about to come now. The blessings of the Lord, the blessings of the Lord, the blessings of the Lord. Write it down. The blessings of the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the blessings of the Lord, what? Make it rich. And do what? Add no sorrow. <coughs> One more time, the blessings of the Lord do what? Make it rich and add no sorrow. One more time, the blessings of the Lord. Lift your hands and tell me about the blessings of the Lord. The blessings of the Lord make you rich and add no sorrow. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad. Kobo Satalakai. The Bible says, and the former rain and the latter rain is going to come in the first month. <clears throat> when things should be dry in your life, God said it's going to rain in the first month. Mm, mm, mm. And the floor shall be filled with wheat, and the fat shall overflow with the vat, the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. God says, my great army, which I sent among you. God said, I sent them among you, but guess what? I'm about to restore what they took. My God, if this is not a great day for you to be alive, tell me what is. This is the day that the Lord has made. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, somebody. This is the day, my brothers and sisters, that God has made. I need you to rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. To the people of the world, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice and be glad. Come on, let me hear those words. Let me hear. Ha, 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 ha. Come on now, rejoice. Because God is turning your situation around. I'm speaking prophetically just like Joel. I'm speaking prophetically to people all around the world. God says rejoice and be glad because this is the day that he has made. My friends, I want you to go to my Facebook of Chief Apostle Leonard Lucas Jr. Give me some response as to this word. I pray that this word has encouraged you. Don't be afraid. If you need some strength, call your brothers and sisters and tell them strengthen you. Let's rejoice with one another 
because God's doing something. It's marvelous in my sight. What God is doing is marvelous because my trust is in God. Somebody help me praise him today. <coughs> Somebody help me lift your hands and magnify God. God is doing something. And I want you to know before I go off the air today, that God is going to turn your situation around. I want you to go to my Facebook page, Chief Apostle Leonard Lucas, and tell me about the miracles that God's performing for you today. In 24 hours, things are going to change. Oh, I got a 24-hour prophecy coming forward for you. In 24 hours, things are going to change. Don't magnify the problem. Magnify God. Look up the word magnify and do that with God. Build God up. Talk about God, not the situation. And watch God work it out. My friends, I want you to know it's an exciting thing to be able to come. And I want you to share with us. <coughs> Excuse me for coughing. I want you to share with us what God is doing in your life. And if you want to sow a seed, I want you to write right now. Write down Light City Church. 6117 St. Claude Avenue, right here in the city of New Orleans. The zip code is 70117. That's Light City Church. That's right, Light City Church, 6117 St. Claude Avenue, right here in the city of New Orleans. Or you can call in right now, area code 504-279-1300. 504-279-1300. It's the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad. God bless you.